So we're on the very, very last bit of methods. And we're going to use integration by completing the square because, well, that's a big, a big giveaway on what we're going to do here. But we're going to learn how to integrate expressions that look like this. And basically, they're going to be a variation on all the other things that we've been doing previously. Obviously, you, you look at this and you think, well, there's no way I could use any of our other techniques. Um, it doesn't look like any of the other things that we've used previously. There's nothing we can do from regular maths for this. So you'll see in a second what happens when we do completing the square. Now, I like personally to complete the square on the denominator separately and then to rewrite the expression. So this is why, thank you, Mahek. This is why all that time ago when you first learned completing the square, this is why it's actually useful. Yeah, it's good to find a turning point of a quadratic, but you can find turning points of quadratics in many ways. Completing the square is an algebraic technique that gets used over and over again. This is one of the most useful ways. So what does this, um, what is this in completing the square form? X minus 4 bracket squared. Yep. Uh, minus 4 squared. Yep, minus 16. Um, plus, eight. plus 8. So it's just x minus 4 squared minus 8. So the integral of 1 over x squared minus 8x plus 8 dx is the integral of 1 over x minus 4 squared minus 8 dx. Now, which one does this look like when you look from your formula book on your previous pages? Do you want me to grab it from a, a corner and put it in? I think I've got it on a corner. Here we go. Sorry, my heck, I'm just going to grab this. Okay, which one does it look like? Oh, wait, no, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, it's the bottom one. Is it? Yeah, of course it is. You've got 1 over, one over x squared minus a squared. 1 over oh. x squared minus a squared. But there's a difference. There's What's a the minus four inside There's a minus 4 inside it. So I'm going to do something once that I never want you to do again, okay? Because it's pointless. We're going to do a substitution to show that we can do this. What was the question, Mehek? No, never mind. So I'm going to do a substitution, and I'm going to let u equal x minus 4. So du dx is equal to 1. So du is equal to dx. So if I did this as a substitution, I just get 1 over u squared minus 8 du. Yeah? 1 over u squared minus 8 will integrate to, using this thing that we have here, well, a squared is 8, so a is 2 root 2, root 8. Yeah? So I get 1 over 2a, so I get 1 over 4 root 2, ln u minus 2 root 2 over u plus 2 root 2. That's using this fact that we've got here. So we just get 1 over 4 root 2 ln of, well, u is x minus 4, so it becomes x minus 4 minus 2 root 2 over x minus 4 plus 2 root 2 plus c. So the substitution is pretty pointless, isn't it? because you could have just predicted that that was what it was going to be. Oh, crap, yeah. So like, <laughs> you see that's there, right? The standard thing we would have gotten, if I went from this, if I went from this, I would have just said, okay, well, it's of that form, so it's going to be 1 over 2a, ln of, okay, well, my x is an x minus 4, so it's x minus 4 minus 2 root 2, and my x is an x minus 4, and it's going to be a plus 2 root 2, plus c. Why, can I, why is that such an easy thing to do? Why is it that I don't have to worry about anything different? Why can I just replace, where it says x here, why can I just replace That's it with x minus 4? Put in. That's basically what x is, then. It doesn't matter what's in the bracket. Yeah, it doesn't matter what's so in the brackets, but 
there's nothing that's squared. It's just the x part. And I suppose the reason this, this works is because what kind of, if this was a graph, how is this graph different to like this graph? Oh, yeah. How is like this graph different to like this graph? One that's got an x minus 4 squared, one that's got an x squared. It's just a move to the right. If it just moves it to the right, it's not going to change how it integrates to. It's just going to be something that's a bit, it just looks a bit different. And then the thing at the end has also, the, the x variable has also shifted 4 to the right. So it makes sense that the graphs are how you'd expect them to be because this one is a translation four to the right, and its result is also translated four to the right, okay? So I personally think that you should just do the red route, and you should just go straight here, and you should notice that your x values are just your x minus four. If there was a two in front of the x, you'd need to introduce a half at the beginning. Why would you need to introduce a half at the beginning? to cancel it out because of the chain rule, yeah? But you don't have to have a two at the beginning. You can actually factor that whole thing out instead. So this is the like explanation of why it works. And you'll see that that's how it's done in the textbook. But I just kind of think it's, it's silly. You can just recognize it basically as a standard result. A bit like, here's my final thing I'll say, if you were going to integrate the cos, cos of x minus 2 dx, you don't do a substitution for that, do you? You just go like, oh, it introdu introduces, it integrates to sine of x minus 2. It's the same thing. You don't need a substitution for that, so why would you need a substitution for that? If we wanted to, we could do a substitution for this, which I'm not going to do. Okay? All good? Yeah. So... This one looks a little bit different here. We've got the bit on the bottom. We have a 2 or 12x plus 2x squared. Now, this one, although it doesn't look like it, this one has to be done as completing the square. Okay? So if we want to, we would take out a factor of 2, and then we have our x squared plus 6x. Then we complete the square of the bit that's inside. So you get x plus 3 squared minus 9. Yeah? You can see why completing the square is needed here, because we've got no standard results that ever look anything like this. No standard results at all look like this. So completing the square actually works for any quadratic at all. You can integrate any quadratic uh, whatsoever. Even, I think, you can do this instead of partial fractions in regular math. So if you have a quadratic, you can just do, you can do this technique if you prefer. So uh, we get 1 over the square root of 12x plus 2x squared dx is equal to 1 over... Now, you just be careful you have the roots completely done here. You've got root 2 root x plus 3 squared minus 9 dx. Do you notice how everything still has to be rooted, what we've got up here a bit? Like if I rooted this, I would have to root all of this, OK? But I won't leave that on there for our notes because it's going to be a bit confusing. So we have 1 over root 2, the integral of 1 over root x plus 3 squared minus 9 dx. What do you think the standard result is of that one? So, can we go back to that? It yeah. Be, yeah, second last one. So you take that all no, one. it's got a square root, Hamza. Oh, sorry. Looks like it's our like cosh, right? It's our cosh x over a. Yeah. So, what's my value of a? It's nine. Nine. So my value of a is three. <laughs> a squared is 9. So we get 1 over root 2, r cosh, what should it be? Um, x plus 3 over 3 plus c. Yeah. So the only thing that was different is, is that it's an x plus 3, so it still has to be an x plus 3. Okay. 
because of what we were just saying, where you could do a substitution and say u equals x plus 3, du dx equals 1, du equals dx, do the long substitution and just find out you get this same old, same old thing that you've got here, okay? Now I wonder if this does work with a partial fractions question. Should we just quickly try one out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to integrate 1 over x plus 2, x plus 3, I need to check that that would actually be something we could do in regular maths. Yeah, I don't see why not. OK, so we would have 1 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. So this is 1 over, oh, I should have done the different numbers, really. Let's do, because I'd rather just have a nice, easy pairing of stuff. I'd rather have an even number. x plus 2x plus 4. So you get x squared plus 6x plus 8. So you get x plus 3 squared. Minus 9 plus 8, which is minus 1, which is a 1 over x squared minus 1. So it's one of these types that you get here. So it's 1 over x squared minus 1. So a is 1. Actually, one over two a. So it's 1 over 2 ln of... X minus a. So that's x minus a over x plus a plus c which is 1 over 2 ln of x plus 2 over x plus 4. So we'd say that's, that, that's more quicker. Yeah, I think it's quicker. Should we just quickly do, should we do it with partial fractions? Yeah, imagine we do it and no one asks, they just look at it and say, what? Oh, we're going to give you 10 minutes for the exam question. Okay, so partial fractions, we have 1 over x plus 2, x plus 4. I mean, I know it's right, is equal to a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 4. And you can already see why it's partial fractions, because look, ln, two, two fractions, like kind of makes sense. So we get 1 equals a x plus 4 plus b x plus 2. Do you want to do the comparing method? OK, so you get 0 equals a plus b, and 1 equals 4a plus 2b. No, me neither, but it's what Hamza wants to do. I like doing the A equals? A equals a half, B equals a minus a half. B. A equals a half, B equals minus a half. Well, look, that's where the half is coming in. So when we integrate it, let's just go back to this stage here. It's the same thing as integrating a half over x plus 2 minus a half over x plus 4 dx, which is a half ln x plus 2 minus a half ln x plus 4 plus c, which is a half ln x plus 2 over x plus 4 plus c. Done. Whoops. Kind of nice, isn't it? Because the proof of this thing that we've got here, do you remember how we proved this? That this gave you this. How did we prove it? Have a look. Yeah, Nahid's got it already. We proved it using partial fractions. Didn't we? We did x minus a, x plus a. It's, uh, we definitely did it. We did it a long time ago. Here. It's on the almost middle page, just the page before the middle page. So we did the proof of a squared, 1 over a squared minus x squared, but it works for all of them, okay? It's kind of nice. Um, if it was slightly different, though, if it was a plus here, it's the one that integrates to an arctan, which means it wouldn't come up in normal maths. So this one, because it's a minus here, could come up in normal maths because it all integrates to like LN stuff like this. Nice, eh? Hey? Yeah, and you should just 
<laughs> you should just get to this stage and then go, bam, straight into that. Obviously, you're allowed to do this. You're obviously allowed to do this. Maths isn't like just put into these little boxes. So questions, 21 to 23. I want to race through them, please. Why don't you do them? You want to do them on paper or your books, whatever you prefer, all the boards. Let's go.